did not choose dance. Dance chose me. You tell me to forget that my grandmother was born right there, so all right. I don't know, I just love it. I just love dance. Once I started dancing, um, there was something that just, I liked the whole feel of the dance, the creativity that came with it. Being such a quiet person, dance allowed me to be different. I could be a different person in a choreography. It did not bother me to do things on stage that I would normally wouldn't do. I grew up in Fairfield Road, Black Rock. My father's name was Raphael Edison Lynch, and my mother's name was Norma Joyce Cumberbatch. I grew up in a time when we didn't have electricity, and we didn't have water, actually. So going to the pipe was a common sight to see everybody going to the standpipe. Not too far from where I live at that time, cash water. And at night we burn our kerosene oil lamps, sometimes candles as well. And that was a community and that's how we live. Everybody sharing and looking after one another. It was those days when the houses were, houses were always open. And I'm speaking about the 50s. People just generally had a, a love of self for, for each other. And I remember as a little boy, everybody liked me, out of my brothers. And they would come to the house and pick me up and take me to their house and stuff like that. And all the old ladies loved, loved me. But my name as growing up was never called Jean growing up. I didn't even know Jean was my name until long after, because they called me Carson. That's what my family still called me Carson. And most people who knew me from the older days called me Carson. I started school at Eagle Hall Primary School, probably around five years old. And from there I went to Wesley Hall Boys, um, in, where it is now in King Street. Um, that time was just boys, and I ended up going to secondary school at St. Andrews Secondary Boys. Um, I went to all boys school, and from, from there, my first job was cash boy. <laughs> I was introduced to church from the time I was a little boy. That wasn't anything new. Um, I grew up with my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my mother, so my grandmother was the matriarch of the house. She went to church, everybody had to go to church. So from a little boy, we, were, we used to go to the Q Church. I remember being confirmed as an Anglican at St. Matthias Church. We used to live up that side. I was a, a youngster then, a teenager actually. But church came and go and I went with it. But there was always something about church that kept me going back or somebody was always there to invite me to a church. And I find wherever I went, if it was overseas or here, I ended up in somebody's church. So there I was at home, this is 2005, and a friend of mine for the, for the longest while was trying to get me to go to church with her at People's Cathedral. One Christmas she came and she asked me about going to see the singing tree. And I said yes, and I had my car and stuff, and I picked her up that the evening we went to People's Cathedral. It was a very lovely evening with the singing. Music was nice, they sang very well. And I was all ca ca caught up in, in the whole thing of the, of the program. And one of the pastor's wife was singing, come and behold. And it, I felt as if she was singing to me. At the end of the program, 
the pastor, I don't remember his name, a young pastor, he came and he did an altar call. He started to pray and my eyes started, our heads were all down and I started to feel this sensation coming over me. And I couldn't stop myself from crying. crying. And I stood there, and as I listened, I felt it was just me he was talking to. And I, I couldn't, and he prayed and he prayed, and then he said, all those who want Jesus in their life put their hands up. And I just found my hands just going up by itself, and it went up in the air. <sighs> And he kept on praying, and I kept on crying, I couldn't stop crying. And eventually he said to us, all those who had their hands up, stand up. So I stood up, and I opened my eyes, and I saw that there were other people standing up too as well. And then he invited us to the altar, and he said another prayer. They took us into the room in the back of the church. And someone came and sat with us and asked him, what's your name, where your telephone number is? I couldn't really talk at that time, so they, everybody else got the information left. I was the only body left in the back with the young man who was sitting next to me. So eventually I was able to talk to him. He got up and he left me there by myself. And the young lady I went with, she was in the back watching everything, and she came and she hugged onto me. And we started crying together. <laughs> Hi. And all she was saying to me is, let him in, let Jesus in, let him in, let Jesus in. And from that evening, I don't know, something just, just every time I heard certain hymns, it's like I started crying. And during that time, I was, um, that was in December, December 26th when that happened. So I started rehearsals for a production in January called At the Foot of the Cross. And I chose out, there was something was behind me and I, I was just choreographing. I choreographed actually practically the whole, whole evening and selected all the music. And Shirley, Shirley, Shirley Susan was singing, one of the songs I used was, Come Ye Disconsolate. And every time I heard that song, it was like something just took over me and I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried all the time plus one or two others. And that, that whole, that month from January to April, that was the rehearsals after the show. It was like I was in a different mood, like something was happening to me and I didn't know what, nobody spoke about it. So rehearsals kept going, they kept rehearsing. And I think the rehearsals was a way of fitting into what was supposed to be happening to me at that time. But even the songs, even the hymns that I chose for, the, for that production, had meaning. It was not just dancing for dancing's sake. I felt it from inside and it came up to my dance.
I started dancing in 1973. Um, it was with a group. Uh, I don't remember the name of the of the if we had a name for the for the group, but it was led by a, a gentleman called Anthony Newton, and he lived in my area. And he had asked, he, he had talked to me about dancing some time back, and then he came. So I started this group and if I wanted to be part of it. And that's how I started dancing. Um, it, the group didn't last too long, because he went to rave, uh, went to Canada, and after that, we never heard from him. And we tried to carry on, carry on the group for the rest of the year. But it folded up, I think, by the end of the year or so. That was the year NIFCA started, and we were planning to enter a piece in NIFCA. But it never happened. Then the following year, a friend of mine invited me to Season of Dance, Barbara's Dance Theater Company, Season of Dance, 1974, at the Marine Hotel. And I went, and, and I was captivated by what I saw. And shortly after that, when the term began again, I went and signed up for classes, and that's why I started dancing at the Barbara's Dance Theater. And for the rest of 74, um, I, I got a scholarship to the school, so I used to go to work in the days from 8 to 4.30, and then I had to run from there to get up to dance here to start class at 5.30. I did that for a good few years. Yeah. But um, that's where I was, that's for me where it started, because dance here brought a whole different way of discipline into, into me from the, from the dance. And um, I, I, you know, you had to be on time, you had to get there. And there was no way I can't do this and you're not going to do that. You know, you had to, not had to, but I just had that sense of feeling that this was something I wanted to do, and I put my best effort into it. But then, um, who was teaching? I think they all influenced me in some way. It was Molly Krokoff at that time. I think she would have been, I don't remember if we had classes with her, but she would have been, I think from watching her choreographies and stuff, has made come definitely from the Caribbean input, from her knowledge of the Caribbean dance. Having classes also with Richard Springer, she also, I was very impressed with how she worked and how she moved as well. And Rosemary Neelands uh, from the modern side of it. But I think I had more, I think I had more classes with Rosemary. I, and then again, she also taught company classes. So I had her in the school and I had her in the company. When I first met Carson, he came to the Barbados Dance Theatre as a student. And I have watched him really progress and develop his whole personality his gift for teaching and his gift for choreographing. And I've worked many years with him, not only at the Barbados Dance Theatre, teaching him, being part of the company, me being director, him being director, me being principal of the Barbados Dance Theatre, and then his, his um, connection with Community College and I used to invigilate all his students. So we had a, we've had many, many years of, of work together and development. I would have met Gene Carson. He would have been Gene then, he would have been Carson Comabatch. In 1974, when I was in, invited to do a, an audition for company, I would have been fortunate to see Gene perform at St. Winifred's members. I thought, well, you know, this is something that I really want to do because don't forget in 1973, 74, there wasn't a whole lot of men bold enough to come forward to do more than dance. So when I see these guys performing on stage, I remember clearly the season I first saw them at Glenville Love and I were together. We sat there and said, many friends, we thought, oh boy, he's a salty boy, you think we can handle this thing? I said, man, Glenville, we're going to try. We're going to put up all, all, all our effort in this and take as many classes as possible and Gene, all the other male dancers would have really mentored us tremendously in the way the dance theatre was structured meant that you really had to go through a very rigid regime of training before you were eligible to be on the stage with the premier dancers of the company 
which Carson obviously was for very early, which meant that his level of technique and skill reached a level that they thought was obviously good enough for him to be, to be part of the season. So that was a great inspiration and he would pull us aside, you know, at nights we had a class called the men's variation class. We only men did that class. Very, 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 um, very, very rigid, a very tough class because, you know, men had to show the contrast to the women in terms of power and strength and agility and so on. And Carson, being a member for longer than we were, understood it a lot clearer than we did. So obviously he took the time out for us and taught us quite a bit, showed us quite a bit on the side to enable us to un, um, sort of grow faster and become more comfortable within ourselves as male dancers, to thrive, to become company members as soon as we possibly can. I remember dancing in NIFCA with Dance Theatre in 1974. Rosemary did a piece, I think it was a Nazi, uh, some of it were Nazi, and I was in that piece. Um, that would have been done for the season the following year, I think, as well. I know the first season I did was 1975. So th those pieces that happened that year would have been the ones I would have been in. Well, the journey wasn't an overnight thing, actually. Um, from moving from the school to the company didn't mean that I, I had achieved everything. Because the training was more rugged and more rigid. And to go to, to go to work the whole day and then leave every evening and go to class wasn't easy. And get home even at 11 o'clock the night. And, and in those days, most of the time I had to catch bus to get back home. It was a journey I never really thought about. I just knew I had to do it. And we did it. I was looking at the program the other day too and I saw, um, it was for the Barber's Dance Center and I saw trainee teacher in the program and my name was next to it. So it means that I would have gone through maybe some kind of training process before I would have teach a class. But um, from the teaching, I went to then to the choreography. And choreography was, seemed to, I, seemed to, I seemed to have a calling for choreography. And I just choreographed right, left and center. During the late 70s then, I was still here choreographing and teaching. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been director until 1988. So I had all that time to hone my skills. Everything that we were training to do came out in the season. That was our show, showpiece, our showcase. And from that season, because I mean, we were training, training all the time and training, we used to have classes every night. That's one thing I always say about well, dance theater, you had to be in class every night. And from seven, seven or 7.30 it was, we had class first and then we rehearsed till whenever we start rehearsals. Heather Ford. I have to mention Heather Ford. Heather was my, I, her name is Butcher now, Heather Ford Butcher. But Heather and I were partners in dance. We danced everything, anything you want us to do, we go and we dance. Um, and I think, she was the only, I think she was the only one that I partnered like that. Even though another dancer may have partnered someone, we were always together dancing. Um, I can't think of any way, anyone else in that way that I would have danced with Heather. We sort of blended together. And she would jump and I would just put my hands out and catch her. <laughs> she was like that. And she wasn't fearful of anything. She, she would just take off and I would just know I had to, I had to hold her. First time I went to Jamaica was 1976 for Carrie Festa. That was the first year I saw the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica perform because they had performances in the evenings and we went. And there again, I was taken back by what I saw. And they were the whole thing of the whole live, live music. It wasn't like they were using tape music, they were using singers and orchestra and, and the dancing was good, very good. The second time I went to Jamaica was 1977. That was the attend the summer dance school they had that year. And I think the program was on, was in its initial stages then, because they were opening it up to the Caribbean and they were trying to influence the Caribbean to send their dancers down and stuff. And I think I, I did apply for the, to go to the college and I was accepted. 
Um, I also spoken to the late Professor Rex Nutherford at that point in time, and they were encouraging me to come down and do the program too as well. So I decided to go and do it. People asked me, there were some people from here who know why I'm not going to early school, why am I going to Jamaica, blah, 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 blah. And I, I didn't even take them on. I just knew something about Jamaica and I went. Oh, there are good few, few people that influenced my head now. Um, if I start with the teachers, they're Bert Rose, of course. Um, no, he was a no-nonsense tutor, but he was all right. Um, very strict and very disciplined. And there was also Barry Moncrief. And I think at that time, Marjorie Wiley, who was the director of music for the national company, was teaching that, that um, Caribbean form, folk form class. Of course, I can't forget Barbara Recker. Um, she was my first dance composition teacher. And I enjoyed my classes with her. She also taught me dancing education as well. That was another course I did. But we had a lot of theory and I never knew there was so much theory in dance that I signed up for the course. It didn't, but it didn't bother me really because I mean, I had, I had a secondary education here at home. So it was like going back to school. And I once you settle down and you buckle, it was a lot of work. Once you buckle down and you do your studies and write your papers, you were okay. Jean first attended Edna Manley College in 1979 for the Diploma in Educational Dance. As a member of the Barbados Dance Theatre, he presented strong skills as a dancer performer and was able to transfer these skills to the development of educational dance and dance composition, presenting full marks in all the subjects. He later returned to the college to complete his degree, he was a dedicated student who worked hard on his personal development and never missed classes completed assignments on time, and from the beginning, he displayed a strong sense of creativity. He also grew to be an excellent teacher and choreographer, working with NDTC as an outstanding performer and choreographer, and appearing in many dance works for the company. Working with P Professor Netherford was I don't know, it was different. And he was funny, but he was also strict. And he had a way of using his voice in the class. Or oh, something he would do, I said in here, hmm, ah. And even, even his voice used to sort of propel you in the exercise. And then he, and he, and he, he all taken up in what he's doing and we following at the bar on the center, depending on what it was. And I think he was a very, in the way how he choreographed and how he set groupings and stuff on the stage, I, I, I like how he, how he um, utilized choreographic forms as well. So that sort of, was a, that, wasn't, that was an inspiration for me too as well. Just to be in his um, classes, his technique classes, and being in his choreographies. Eduardo Rivero. I met Eduardo in 1979, here again at the Edna Manley College, um, at the Jamaica School of Dance, because the school I brought him in to teach for that year. And we had him in the, in the mornings for, for technique, and we had him in the evenings for technique, and we had him for the company for technique. So we had a, a good dose of technique with him. But, um, but he was very disciplined. You couldn't even open your mouth in his class. How are you good? <laughs> I was chosen as one of the dancers to do, to perform Sukuri, because he had came to mount that, to mount, mount, that, mount that on the national company. And I was selected as one of, one of the, I think I was chosen as one of the, on the studies at that time. But then one of the dancers dropped out and I got to be in his place. So there you go, and history became now, and the rest is history because then I just danced Sukri every time.
Tsukuri was a dance I loved very much. And I always have fond memories of learning. It took us about six months to rehearse that properly before we actually went on stage for the season. I applied to Brockport to go and I went there in 1997. State University of New York College at Brockport. Prior to that, I was at Edamani College teaching for two years. I was on, I was on, I was on staff for two years at Edamani College. And at the end of those two years, 95-97, um, I was speaking to the school about going up to Brockport as an exchange student for the first semester, and so I can, so I can um, get into college and finish, upgrade my, because up to that point in time, I had a diploma in dance, dancing education from Edamani but I didn't have a bachelor's, so going up to Brockport allowed me to upgrade my diploma to a bachelor's for one year. When my credits were transferred from Jamaica to Brockport, I had 27 credits left to update to the bachelor's. So what I did at the end of the first semester, I came back home, I applied to the government for a grant which, which they gave to me, and I went back to Brockport and I paid my tuitions for that semester. And that's how I finished up. Now, at the end of that year, I wanted to continue into the master's program. So that made sense to come home. So I auditioned then for the master's program and I got into the master's program with a fellowship, a teacher, a teacher assistant. I was given them a teacher assistant to teach and to study. It um, wasn't easy. But I, I did it. Um, my, my whole, I have very good memories of Brockport. Even the winters, the winters were something else. I didn't, many nights I come home and it's from the library at one o'clock in the night, only me on the road, and this little jack coat on me and I crying, crying, scrumming, trying to get through the cold to get home, get in the warm bed. And that went on for three years actually. So Brockport opened a door to, to other to the U.S., to other companies, to other tutors. The, the college would have had guest tutors coming down and stuff like that, and, and they would have um, hosted um, college programs too. So there was a lot of activity, and every semester they had performances. I danced in the modern dance productions. I danced in the the Caribbean dance come dance production with Sankofa. African Drum and Dance Ensemble, because the school has their own African Drum Ensemble up there, which was run at the time by Clyde Morgan. I think he has retired. It was a very busy time too, as usual. Same with all with dance. Dance schools, you do your classes in the day, evening rehearsals. So it went like that for the three years. Or sometimes you go there, you do performances, and you come back. And you, of course, there were a lot of choreographies and a lot of styles that you learn. I think one of my most intriguing works at that school was doing a piece, um, a Native American dance from a choreographer, Daystar. She mounted a piece, I was the wolf in that. That was very intriguing, very different. And I enjoyed that moment as well, because it was different, but something gave me another way to use my skills. But I grew up as a teacher assistant, you teach introductory classes. I did an introduction to dance, and I did the Caribbean, something Caribbean. So those were the two classes. I wouldn't have taught in the, in the theory classes or anything like that, but just the technique. And, that, and those were for, they, they, they have an introduction to dance which is open to the university. So you get students from different disciplines in that, in that, in that course. That was fun. I had about something to get 30 something, 40 something students in one class. And that was not too fun. And I'm not saying that because of, of where you have to correct papers for the semester, for the semester final, you also have your own schoolwork to go and do too as well. So it was a really stressful time during the mid-semesters and the final semester to get the grades and all those things in. I had started documenting Eduardo Rivero's um, technique 
and and the reason for writing it at Brockport was because I wanted to develop it some more. Um, I already had the information and it was already in my body too. So it was it was something I wanted to do and wanted to leave. Uh, well, I started teaching dance in Barbados. In the early years, it was Barbados Dance Center and groups like Country Theatre Workshop. Um, I did a, a perform, well, I, didn't, I don't remember teaching Rontana, but I did a, a show, a season with them called Creative Theme 78. I was in that, that production with Rontana. So I did work also with Dance at the Dance Experience. Um, which was uh, founded by Richard Springer and then was carried on by Heather Butcher. Um, that's the early years. And then anybody, any group that wanted me to come and do anything with them, I'd go and do it. I first met Carson in 1983 um, at the Barbados Dance Theatre. I, I got a scholarship there and he was one of my teachers. He became the artistic director in 88, and he was the, the artistic director, I think, for about four, four to six years. And as the artistic director, I remember Carson being very strict. He was a very um, serious artist. Um, he, punctuality was very important to Carson. Um, he, his belief or my interpretation of his belief at the time was that he wanted a, a group of serious dancers and that is what he worked towards while he was an artistic director, taking dance to that next level. I met Mr. Carson as a young, impressionable 12-year-old. <laughs> I was a member of the Barbados Dance Theatre. Um, under his tutelage, I was part of the Young Performers, which was a junior company of the Barbados Dance Centre. I think my fondest memory of Mr. Carson as a young dancer would, would be um, learning his choreographies. And we were, we were a handful of that junior, that, that era of, of young, young performers. We used to give him so much trouble. But he was such a, he was fun. And so we did everything in, in jest. Like we would joke with him and tell him stuff too hard. And he would say, just do it, just do it. I, I think my time there was just that. It was fun. The friends that I made, um, I still have today. His, his work for me at that age was always, it always felt like it was the longest time I have ever been on stage in my entire life. And then the next dance was longer. I came back to Barbados in 2000 from Rockport. My mother was waiting on me, so I had to come back. I came in and they called me in, the, called me in at BCC and told me that the government has said that they needed to initiate the started the associate degree in dance program for the college and they wanted me to do it and there wasn't anything that was left to say as anybody left this or that that you, you have something to follow so i just had to use my sense to put it together what also helped me with the, with the um structuring the the program was the curriculum development officer at that time which was ski ski She's now Skate Skate Thompson, I think she is now Thompson, right? She was very, very helpful in how to do this, what to do that, you know, put this here, do this there. But I, and I did everything to sew. So I had to write everything, all the course outlines, I had to write. And by the end of, by the end of it, I had, it took me a whole year actually to sit down and do that. Because during that year, I taught in the theater department. The other course, I did dance for the theory, but just one or two, not much. But the rest of the time I spent on creating the syllabus. 
when I first came back from studying, he was the first person who called me and said, you're back, would you like to teach? And so I started as a part-time tutor at Barbados Community College under him. Um, he would have been um, the coordinator at the time. And he, he extended um, a hand to me to just to get my feet wet in teaching because I had just come back and just started teaching. And he trusted me with that program, with those, with those um, first set of students. So I was actually involved with the first set of graduating students of the Barbados Community College through his um, through his invitation. In BCC, I had an had a application out for lecture and dance, and I played and got selected. It was a different type of program, program since it was a, a creative arts program and it had a mixture of film and theater in it as well. Um, but I worked in the, in the dance segments of it, and from that, from those dancers that were in the program at that time, I was able to form a dance company. So we were having our day classes again for the students, and the evening we would have classes for for the company. So and the company was was from people who were who were who wanted to dance or who were in the school. And so we did a couple of shows up during the semester. It was fun. We had a, we had a good times at EBCCA. I also performed with the students because. Because over the years when I monk productions in colleges or dance schools, I usually dance with the students. Um, and they usually want me to dance with them. They say, Mr. Mr. Gene, you're not dancing? And I say, well, of course I can dance, I will dance. And some of my best works came out of those, some of those programs right there. <laughs> Outside of Barbados, in, I would have taught in St. Lucia, did workshops, a couple of workshops over there. I would have done classes in St. Vincent, um, Antigua, Dominica, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica. Tortola has been there and taught class summer workshops there too as well. Um, I've also been to Bahia in Brazil. Um, I did a month there. 1991, I think it was. As a, I didn't actually go to teach classes, but I ended up teaching one, one or two. I was there as an observer, observing the culture and getting involved. During the past few years, I've worked mainly with Dance in Africa and Barbara's Dance Theatre when, before the um, destruction of the studio. It was Ralph who invited me to come and help um, Dance in Africa that year in 1992 when they were getting ready to start. And I thought nothing of it and they went and they did that. Jennifer reminded me of that. Because I thought it was Jennifer too, you know. We were all just born together. I would have known of Jean for several years, being an icon in dance and well associated with Barbados Dance Theatre. But our formal meeting came as a result of our very first season of dance, a tribute to Gabbards, um, written and directed by our chairman, Ralph Thorne. And Ralph decided that for dance and, and using um, Gabby's pieces in an effort to tell the historical story of Barbados and its development, that he wanted top choreographers to work on a new group, a new group with multiple talents and um, diversities in talent. Some of us acclaimed dancers, others of us now learning to dance. And Jean was one of uh, an entire um, cadre of wonderful choreographers. And that is where I met Jean. He gave us for that occasion, John Brown. And to this day, I believe that John Brown is one of our most stellar choreographies. And what drew me to Jean in that period was the fact that there were many of us who had not danced formally. And Jean took the talent that he had and he worked with us um, to suit in a, in a choreography that became one of our greatest works. So from then, Jean was a regular addition to our cast of our staff of tutors, and Mr. Jean, as we affectionately call him, began to teach our seniors and then our juniors. 
How do I describe myself as a choreographer? I just choreograph. I don't pick and choose. Anything that I like and that interests me, I choreograph. Uh, if I like the music, I choreograph it. If I like um, something about something, or I may see something, or somebody may say something, and I feel I could do something justice to it, I choreograph, I choreograph it. And it just come to me, and I don't, like say, I sit down, I have to do this next year, I have to do this the year after. I love all the genres. I think that's why they call me prolific. Because <laughs> I can do it in any genre. All of my pieces I have created, I have loved. Whether I dance in them or not. Um, I think my first season, choreography for season was in 1979. It was the first time I did a choreography for season. From 79 to, I would say, early 2000s. Actually, my last season would have been 2010. So I say up to that point. Although there are one or two choreographers in the back and say, did I do that? <laughs> but but I but I think I, I I love I usually enjoy the ones that I do like. Street people is one that I can think of. I love street people. Um, every time I hear Hamilton, I think I still remember street people. Burgess Street, I love the Burgess Street. Yeah, we have Night Creature. You have um, oh my one of my favorites is. Um, Mating ritual, the dance that reflects the mating habits of the black of the black widow. I thought that was a good piece. I really thought that was a good piece. And Deborah Tate and Deborah Tate Cumberbatch and Michael Tate did a very good job on that. I've done some Caribbean pieces, Caribbean rhythms. I've done Salute to the Landship. That that's really where the landship technique started on for. That was in 1990 when I did the. Salute to the landship. I didn't even think about that far. Because when you look at that piece, you can see the makings of the technique starting in, in that piece. For dance in Africa, it would have been things like cistern, where cleansing waters flow. Um, some, some, I had a piece called Joy of the Lord. I never got to find it, but I thought that was a nice piece. Spirit of Africa. Oh, yes, yeah, Spirit of Africa. No, it's just Spirit of Africa, tribute to sugar. Fisher Four, Stamp Pipe, those are, I think those are classics. Yeah, man. And um, especially my religious pieces, oh, there's some very nice ones I've done over the years. Um, I Surrender All, Dancing Africa Again, Bam in Gilead. That, now, Bam in Gilead was a special production. Bam in Gilead happened during my process of the whole spirit spirit coming out because I I I won I won swear for sure but I'm sure I could have had a spiritual awakening back then when I was in that in the church when I was talking about the the um, going to church that's this teacher then and what happened to me there. When I eventually went on stage those two nights I got baptized of Sunday night of the last show. But those both two nights of performing, it was like if, as Danny Hines said to someone, or as Gene is in the zoom, and they perform that night, he saw him performing that night. It was if something else was propelling me to dance. I cried and danced at the same time. It was something else. And I never felt so, so much energy in my life before. I was just filled with energy. My choreography blew. I choreographed that in 2005 for NIFCA that year. And between 2004, October when my mother died, I didn't come to terms with my mom had gone. And I kept thinking of her, I kept seeing her, I kept talking to her picture when I go home. And I found that I needed to get, get it out, put it down. Not put it down, but find out some, some place where I can channel those emotions. So NIFCA came that year, and again, Jane going to NIFCA. So 
I wasn't sure. I remember I wanted to do something. I, I got the ball um, and started working with the ball. And it started to take shape. And as, I, as the dance, and that dance took a little while to, to come up. I spent most of the time on that, spent most of the time on that piece. Um, and after it was finished, it was like, I had sync with the ball. When I look at it, and not that I saw my mother or anything, but just that it allowed me to place those emotions. I could relate it to the ball. And then when I first did it, I, did, I only had choreographed. I choreographed both sessions, but I only did the first session. So after Nifka, then I included the second session, which pulls me more into it. It's more intense. Yeah. And it requires a lot of concentration. And when I go there, sometimes I, I feel, I, I feel like I'm in, a, in another zone as well. From home. Sometimes I just sit on the beach and watch the fishermen, fishermen. Sometimes I just sit on the beach and watch the fishermen, fishermen. Sometimes they sit by the shore They by and on the way they go To be many fishing banks To catch fish without thanks Bajan, Bajan, fishermen Catch fish without banks. Bajan, Bajan, fishermen. Sometimes I just sit on the beach and talk, and talk to fishermen. Fishermen. Sometimes I just sit on the beach and watch. Fishermen, fishermen, the fishermen, fishermen, the fishermen.
I joined the Barbados Landship Association in 2013. Um, I always wanted to be part of the landship, but, but in the early days, it never, never needs to be enough time to do this, enough time to do that. Um, but I eventually took the initiative and I spoke to Admiral Watson. I told him I was coming to join. And then that Friday night, I went down to the dock, went up to the dock, signed my, filled out the form, and there I presented myself. I, I never saw it as just, as anything, um, as they say, not dance. I was, I was seeing it as a dance form from the early days in the 70s, watching that shit. And um, I had the opportunity then because to join the landship and to be a real part of the landship, going out on the parades and doing the, um, the shows with them. And it showed me another side of landship. And I, from, from being there then, it allowed me then to be able to look at the, the maneuvers from a different perspective. Not just to stamp and watch it, but being able to do it and see what you can do more how they move and how the body responds to them. So in the classroom, I go back and I take a, a maneuver and I deconstruct it and reconstruct it in a way that it creates a movement that represents for landship. Yeah? It went little by little. So what I've done with the landship technique is that I'm flushing out so that Eventually, when you see the landship technique, you don't have to ask who, what technique is that or whose technique is You know it's the landship. I have processed it in a way now that we can learn it, we can train from it as a technique. I would have started, like I said, not, not unofficially, I would have started when, that, when I did that first landship dance in 19, because I didn't really think about it. I just knew I wanted to do something different. But officially, I started when I came back from Brockport. I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to create just any technique, somebody's technique. I could have used um, probably maybe Edward's technique and create something from that. But then I wanted something to be to be Barbadian. I wanted it to be something from here. And I, the, I, I felt very much strongly that Lanchette Maneuvers could, could be this thing that could do that. So there, there then the opportunity arose that I had the BCC students teaching Caribbean dance too. So Caribbean dance became Lanship technique. So it was molded and blended on them and, and developed to the stage where it is now. And I think that over the years, what, what I would have done in the first group of students that I start would be much different than when you look at it with, this, with the last batch that I'm working with now.
Metamorphosis came after Blue, and it was like that was just waiting. I went into the, into the cocoon, and then Metamorphosis just came up from there. It felt as if I was in a, some kind of a, some kind of someplace trap, and trying to get out. It was like, it was as if I was, I was trying to burst out of something. Something was, I was like, I didn't even know where it was in the, in the, in the thing. It was really strange. And um, it was like darkness and then light. And I came out of the sun. I, I still, you know, it took me a while to, uh, to understand what I did with metamorphosis. Because I, di I didn't really see the dance. I didn't even know what the lighting looked like I, when the night it was done at Nifka, because I'd never seen it, being in the bag all the time. But it did, it was like me coming out of myself, like whatever was in there that had me, at, at that point, I, I, I burst out of it. Maybe it was the whole thing, but I think it's still more bursting out to do. Metamorphosis won two awards that, that year at NIFCA. The Governor General's Award for our Excellence and the Prime Minister's Award for our Outstanding Performance, I think it was. Those two awards that he won that year.
I would say in reflection that all of all of what I have done was to me geared in a way. I don't I don't I I, I don't want to say that it was specifically chosen that I went set about to do it this way or that way. I think that things have a way of happening and there's a pathway that follows our journey or a pathway that we walk on. And I believe that it is that pathway that decided for me when I can do this or when I was going to do that. And with the tears and the joy and everything that came with it, um, I, I, I enjoy the whole journey from birth to now in the, in the dance. And I think that that has shaped me to who I am. What's next for Jane? Continue working on my technique and develop me to a stage, a level where that other people can be able to teach it and that it can be recognized as a part of one of the techniques of the Caribbean um, or, or of the world really too. Um, and enjoy life. I would like to be able to watch the sunset, go to the beach, you know, relax. The more he teaches, he keeps talking about maybe he shouldn't teach anymore. He should teach till he drops because he has so much to give. And it's just a wonderful, it's been a wonderful experience for me to watch him grow and develop and see all his wonderful choreographies and, and just touch so many people. It's a gift. Right. On behalf of the Barbados Dance Theatre, I would like to thank you for your sterling contribution to the development of dance at the Barbados Dance Theatre over the last four decades. I want to thank you, Carson, for being a true friend. Love you much. The sky is the limit, Jane. Go for it. And as we say in Jamaica, what well, good, my friend. Barbados owes him a, a, a strong debt of gratitude. He still has a lot to give. And when we look across the dance fraternity of Barbados, many of us, if not all of us, can truly say, I have been mentored, I have been tutored, I have been advised, I have been better as a dancer because of Jim Carson.